Welcome to Sunday Worship Online with the Stamford Methodist Circuit for Sunday the 31st of December with me the Reverend Andrew Hollins. Given today's date our worship includes two aspects. As the church is still within the Christmas season our worship will reflect that. Indeed that's where we will begin. Our worship will also move us on in reflecting as we're on the brink of the new calendar year 2024 and all of our worship and reflections will be against the background of the theme of challenge and change which my colleagues have been reflecting on each day online over the past few days. Come, let us sing, let us awaken with our praises, let us listen to God in hope and expectation. As we are gathered we sing the hope of the Christ child, as we lament, we pray for a fresh start, we long for the new world. As we hear the word of God, we give our full attention, listening for the new thing God is doing. As we remember the freedom God brings, our hearts are full of song. As we sing, we rejoice in the abundance of God and turn our sorrow into praise. Our first hymn picks up the message of that call to worship. The hymn is based on the words of Psalm 98 verse 4. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. It's a hymn which has gained increasing popularity as a Christmas carol, proclaiming with joy that not, not only has the Lord come, but that the Lord is come. In a version with by vineyard music, we share the carol, Joy to the World. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. Heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven, heaven, nature sing. Joy. share together in prayer. Let us pray. Joy to the world, the Lord is come, but not in the way expected. 
You are the holy creator, above all thought and imagination, worthy of all honour and praise. Yet here you are, a baby in a manger, completely dependent, vulnerable to nature and the evil designs of human beings. This is no safe place. And yet we feel safe, for here you are, entering the same real world in which we live. Because this is how you came, we can acknowledge that life is fragile, but we can be less anxious. Because this is how you came, we can acknowledge that nothing in life is certain, but we can still trust. Help us now and in the days ahead to cling to this news of God made human, this good news of God with us, of God for us. Because here is the promise of renewed life, of life in all its fullness, of eternal life. And so here at this manger, we know that you alone are worthy of all honour and praise, that life finds meaning and purpose that a frail world can hope again. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Amen. And we move to our first Bible reading, which is part of the majestic first chapter of St John's Gospel. We hear the first five verses, and then verses 10 to 18. The Gospel According to John Chapter 1 In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God who were born, not of blood or by the will of the flesh of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. Our next hymn is one of Charles Wesley's Christmas hymns, which is not often sung in worship these days. However, it has much to say to us through its profound and poetic reflection on the wonder, work and meaning of Christ's incarnation. In this way, it echoes the words of the Gospel reading, which we've just heard St John reflecting on the impact made by the coming of Jesus Christ as the Word of God incarnate into the world. The hymn is Singing the Faith 208, let earth and heaven combine, and it's played and sung in a recording by Gareth Moore of the Isle of Man Methodist Church. Oh God. 
not contracted to a span incomprehensibly reflection, I've drawn upon some thoughts offered for this week by the Reverend Duncan Dormer in Pray With The World Church, a resource for prayer from the United Society Partners in the Gospel. Duncan's words resonated with me against the background of the overarching theme of challenge and change for our circuit's online devotions in Christmas tide this year. As we step into the new year, we know that our world is a deeply uncertain place. Few of us predicted the events of the last few years, the COVID-19 pandemic, a major land war in Europe, the cost of living crisis or conflict in the Holy Land. We do not know what lies ahead in 2024. We can only step forward encouraged by St Paul's message in his second letter to the Corinthians, to live by faith and not by sight. As individuals, as flesh and blood, we all crave freedom and security. Freedom from injustice and violence, and the security that a good livelihood, friends, community, just laws and government bring and our hearts naturally go out to all who live with deep insecurity and oppression. As we are called by God to walk faithfully into 2024, so we're called to a freedom rooted in Christ. This is an active, life-giving freedom, a freedom that reaches out towards others. It's expressed in our solidarity with our sisters and brothers, with our neighbours globally and locally, a solidarity that sets people free, ourselves and others. It begins when we come before our loving God in prayer and it equips us for the journey ahead.
the mysteries untold is his measureless power of old. Come, come, let us sing to our God. second Bible reading we hear some words of prophecy from the end of chapter 61 and the beginning of chapter 62 of the book of Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole be being shall exult in my God for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robes of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest, until her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal crown in the hand of your God. This is the word of the Lord. The following reflection uses words written by the Reverend Stephen Ansa Addo a recently ordained United Reformed Church minister. Throughout this year and the next, in all seasons of life, God bless you and may your soul rejoice, occasionally with a whisper, in other times as loudly as you can. God bless you and may your soul rejoice. Lord, encourage and challenge us to make the pursuit of fruitfulness a lifelong commitment. May we seek peace in your grace throughout the year in every time of need. May we celebrate your righteousness and salvation, clothing our hearts, thoughts and bodies. May we challenge and disrupt 
every form of injustice and pluck the weeds of unforgiveness from our hearts. As we tend to our gardens this new year, may we plant seeds of hope everywhere with faith-filled prayer, words of encouragement and joy. As we prepare for all that is to come our way, let us use the tools of faith, hope and love. Love for our God and love for one another. As we tend the garden, we grow as disciples of Jesus Christ. Lord, we are in your hands, for you are the master gardener. Your words of hope and life will keep us planting, reaping and sowing. In due course, you will cause what you have called us to plant to sprout. Stephen's reflection reminded me of a poem which I've sometimes come across printed in church newsletters. The poem's sometimes called Gardening God's Way, and we share it now in a series of images. As Christians, we would want to include time for prayer, time for study and time for God amongst those things which make for a good garden, a good life. So let us pray. God of grace, on the brink of the new year, we offer you our thanks for the gifts of the year drawing to a close, for the possibility of new beginnings for time to reflect and look ahead. We offer you our hopes for peace among the nations, for forgiveness and reconciliation, for understanding within our communities, for health and well-being. We offer you our dreams and desires and the deepest thoughts of our hearts. God of grace, you make all things new. We commit ourselves to you. Guide us, bless us and work within us so that we may honour you in all we are and all we do. In Jesus' name. Amen. And together we pray the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Our final hymn, Brian Wren's this is a day of new beginning, doesn't appear in our British Singing the Faith hymn book, but it is in the hymn book of the United Methodist Church. It's sung for us by the Aldersgate Chorale.
this last Sunday of the year, this joyful Sabbath, we have sung new songs, rejoiced, glorified and praised God, because Jesus the Saviour has come to God's children who are poor and exploited. The Messiah has come to God's children who walk in the darkness of oppression. The Lord has come to our generation in its need. Let us continue to rejoice and ponder these things. Then let us follow the newborn baby, Saviour, Messiah, Lord, into the new year and beyond, into the unknown, into his wonderful kingdom of compassion and truth. Amen. <laughs>